I'm uh, Milan Vojnovic, I'm a senior researcher with Systems and Networking Group. So today I'm going to tell you about the project on doing kind of analytics on massive scale graphs. So let me lead you through a number of them and then tell you what the project is about. So first we start with a, maybe a scenario you could pretty much all relate to it. Think of it as of a, doing a graph search, so search on graph data. So this graph data might be a social graph. Uh, for example, this would be a LinkedIn uh, network or could be some knowledge graph and for example Facebook graph search or something of that kind or maybe in office uh, we will have some no use of knowledge graphs if you use Bing there's going to be some results being displayed making use of a large-scale knowledge graph so what happens in these given settings is that people post queries and these are so-called graph traversal queries so uh, for example graph uh, traversal query may start from an entity or a node which might be a user then it would ask for you know, give me all friends of friends that satisfy certain predicator criteria. For example, give me all the friends of friends who live in, uh, who like a restaurant in Cambridge or something like this. So uh, you may then go beyond one, two, three hops and do essentially various kinds of intersection of these sets. And uh, this is an instance of a computation when you do computation on a graph input data. And this is what we care about. So this is a graph traversal problem I mentioned. So these are some of the instances. Uh, some of these questions are basically feasible pretty much with today's technology. For example, if you look at uh, these local neighborhood queries, we can actually do them uh, at web scale, at a very large scale. Uh, this is an instance of a LinkedIn graph, for example, as a colleague of mine and me. So these are kind of local sort of neighborhoods. So I kind of uh, presume all the people with a direct uh, connection with a colleague of mine and then all of the relationships between them. So. Then uh, what the challenge is, doing this kind of computations when actually we go beyond one or two hops, we go kind of larger scale, and we would like to uh, answer these kind of analytics queries in, a, uh, in a real time. So this is one very timely, very interesting uh, application scenario. Uh, but it is not all, all about this. So maybe before going into or hinting a few other application scenarios, very briefly, uh, this time I'll just point, uh, point out that uh, the challenge lies in the complexity of the computation we do, but also the scale of the data. So we have, we may have like order of uh, hundreds of millions of nodes, uh, trillions of edges, and moreover these nodes are not only you know, specific nodes, like for example in a social graph just users, but these nodes might be uh, entities, could be users, could be images, could be cities, relationships could be also of different type, for example, could be uh, representing that somebody is married to someone, it could be somebody is living, in a place or somebody was born in a place and things like this. So really we deal with massive scale of this essentially graph input data. This is what, what the key point is. Different kinds of scenarios. So for example, in a social network, it's not only about reaching or kind of getting these uh, intersections of sets entities, but also you may, for example, want to rank the nodes with respect to expertise, importance or uh, uh, things like this. So that would require also doing complicated computations. So the bottom line is again that in all of these we would like to compute something on a large scale graph. That graph could be a social network, may represent a chemical structure, or could be a biological, biological network, as well as image, as well as a program flow, flow graphs, and the, a number of other scenarios. So really the bottom line is performing these computations in an efficient way, and the question is how. So a way to do this is really to uh, do computations in an efficient way by parallelizing it. And then the challenge comes in partitioning these data so as to perform eff efficient parallel computing. With so-called data parallel, uh, uh, in sort of uh, data parallel settings, uh, you may have a problem which is pretty much parallelizable. So you basically partition, you do local computation, and once it is done, you just aggregate. So there's not much of a communication between these parallel components. With graph input data, the challenge is, is precisely is that there's a lot of communications between nodes. So for example, if you just go back to the previous example of a graph traversal query, I start from a node, I go from this node to its friends and then friends of friends, that really invo involves passing on messages along the relationships of the edges. And what your goal is, you'd like to partition your graph so then that once partitioned, all these queries, our messages being exchanged are pretty much localized. You don't want them to go from one machine to another in, a, in your data center because that really consumes network resources and causes the slowdown and uh, reduces also the parallelism. So, uh, <clears throat> so as I said, okay, this is the, the, the goal which is common to all of these. So how we do it, so I'll just is one slight summary what we do is really doing these assignments in a, 
uh, way so that we produce high quality partition and there are actually two criterion criteria that you would worry about. So there is criterion one, which is the workload balancing. So how much work each machine is going to do. And then you need to worry, for example, you may worry about how many nodes entities you have assigned across machines. You would like that that number is balanced. And second, what you worry about is that how many edges you have cut. In other words, if I look at one machine, I care about how many edges actually go from this machine into other machines. I, l I don't want this number, total number to be big. So it's really about Partitioning so that we uh, optimize this, a way to do a well principal way that we uh, pursue is that defining a cost of a partition and then minimizing that given cost. But the cost function has to be designed well so that it captures really these both components, two components of workload balancing, number of nodes across partitions, and the, and the sparsity of cuts. Anyway, so then maybe I'll switch and show you how it works in live. So this is a, a live demo of partitioning a graph. It happens to be we took like one of the graphs which we can fit into a machine. So this is a live journal uh, graph representing relationships between uh, nodes. And then there's about uh, 5 million nodes and 50 million edges, roughly speaking. So what is going to happen is that we are going to load this data, read this data in a uh, streaming fashion. So reading one node after the other. And we are going to uh, assign these nodes into one of these 10 partitions which are represented by circles. So what we have in this given display is that on the right hand side we have method, uh, standard de facto method, which is random assignment. Whenever you see a node, you just pick one of these 10 uniformly at random and you assign your nodes there. This is a simple scheme which is often used in practice, practice because of its simplicity, but it's terrible in a way with respect to the performance because as you, as you see, it, it would actually cut quite a number of edges. On the left hand side, it's basically our method, so which we would, rep we would represent it in here. So maybe we would also, uh, it would be worth pointing out that two numbers to care about. So there are two numbers underneath each of these. So the bottom number represents the imbalance. The closer this number to one, the better. And then the upper and then the number is a percentage which really counts what's the percentage of edges that are going to be interior ones. So those are the edges that or uh, relationships that would actually have both endpoints within the same common cluster. So this number, as I said, the closer to 100% the better. So let's see what happens. So if you run this, <coughs> so this is going to read a graph and you'll see actually uh, this being loaded. You'll see there's a, there's a counter of number of nodes seen, the counter of number of edges. If you focus attention a little bit to the random one, so we will see that these circles are pretty much, they look alike. So, and this is uh, representing or indicating the fact that the number of nodes across these uh, different classes is pretty much balanced. And this is what one would uh, expect if you do random assignments, because pretty much you have an, e an even or equal number of nodes being assigned to each of them. On the other hand, if you look at the number of fraction of interior edges, we see that just uh, maybe a 10% of them happen to be interior ones. So this is a rather low uh, percentage overall. So if you focus a little bit, this is for the same graph, just running it in parallel to, uh, to our method, we see that, okay, first of all, in terms of imbalance, we see that these circles are not much identical like they used to be for the random one. There is some difference across them, and this is really pretty much because of the imbalance. So the scheme has some imbalance, but control imbalance. So some nodes may have a larger no number, of, some of the classes may have a larger number of nodes than the other ones. But it happens to be that the imbalance is rather small. It's like one, 106 huh, in comparison to the best one. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at the percentage of the interior edges, it happens to be at the end, once this is finished, it's going to be roughly speaking nearly, or sort of nearly 60%. And this is to be compared with only about 10% for the random scheme. So this is really demonstrating the benefit of doing this optimized assignments with respect to the objective we defined, which is, uh, which really at a slight, uh, it's kind of putting a slight trade-off kind of uh, uh, trading a little bit of imbalance actually yields really significant benefits with respect to the communication cost. Uh, and that actually concludes my demo.